So today we're going to look at the Fabaro door and window sensor for use with Apple HomeKit. This is uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a sensor that lets you know if your doors or windows are actually closed. So here we are, the Fabaro door window. We've got the Apple HomeKit again. Um, can't stress this enough, guys. Just because it's announced doesn't mean it's supported. So there's been more than uh, a couple people who have been burned by um, that logo not being on the box. So for this particular device, available in different colors, I've got it in white, it's got a tamper-proof sensor, it's got a, um, a temperature sensor, and of course the window sensor itself. So we'll open this up. It's well packed here. Look at that. Your your love, your imagination. So that's sweet. That was nice of them to put that on the box for us. Thank you for choosing Fabaro. Well, you're welcome, Fabaro. We'll see uh, how this product works. All right, so it's got the home kit right there on the back of the instructions, so I can take this and file it for later. Um, hopefully this will be on the uh, the unit itself as well, so it's, it's always nice to have it in a couple different places just in case. So here we are with the unit itself, pulling this out. Trying to get the, uh, the rest of the box out here, having a bit of trouble. This is well packed in, and again, I'm a fan of well packed in. That means it's probably not going to shift around in shipping. So um, the fact that we're having a little bit of trouble getting this out of the box, uh, for me at least, is not a bad thing. That means that it's probably going to work because it hasn't bounced around. So you can see here the, we've got this little um, strip of double-sided tape. We've got that the the door sensor here, so that's it's a magnetic sensor. You can see kind of how these things fit together. And once they're close enough to each other, it registers as a contact sensor so that I know that it's they're close together, it's closed. If they're not close together, it's not closed. So pretty simple, actually. Um, this is very similar to the uh, Elgato Eve door and window sensor. Um, the major difference, of course, being that the Elgato Eve products is just a contact sensor. It doesn't actually do um, the temperature sensor or the uh, the tamper proof. So we'll pull this open here. We've already got the battery in here. You can see that there's that little uh, tab to make sure that the battery didn't run out. Um, and there the light flashes on. That kind of lets me know that the contact sensor is is open at this point in time so that the door or window that I'm going to connect this to will also be open. And as I get closer here I'm trying to see whether or not this actually, you know, how this works and where this would match up. With the um, Elgato product, you've actually got spacers that allow you to kind of raise the, um, the, the smaller side of the contact sensor. So you can see here, there we go. Blue light comes on. So this is a blue Bluetooth device. This is not a, I believe Z-Wave is the regular Fabaro. This is a Bluetooth, so it's for use with Apple HomeKit. Um, and this is a good thing, you know, I've, I've had uh, power outages where it's nice to know that in the event of a full power loss in my house, as long as my phone has still got some battery left in it, I can still look at my home kit and say, okay, from my phone or my iPad, let's, uh, let's take a look at this and see whether everything is still closed. So let's go over to the app now. So here we're on the Apple iPad. We're going to open up the home app. Then we're going to go to the plus add accessory and look at that. There is the Fabaro right there. So position the home kit code in the frame. We're going to take that and uh, take a little piece of paper out of the box, the docs, put the home kit code in here. See if I can get my hand steady enough. So this occasionally happens, and, and that's okay, because they give us the ability to just uh, put this in manually. So I will do that here. I'm going to have to go through the pairing door window sensor.
there we go, all paired up. So now we can see what's actually available there. We have the contact sensor, so I can choose uh, what room to put that in or not, and um, also to rename it. I've got the Elgato Eve um, also in my home kit setup, my home smart home, so I'm going to call this the Fabaro for now. And I'm going to call this a window sensor, and I'm going to put this in um, Tristan's room. And then I've also got the temperature sensor, so this is embedded here. Um, the temperature sensor, I'm kind of curious how this is going to work. I live in a northern country, I live in Canada, so it's going to be a little interesting for me to see how a um, contact sensor that is on an outside window measures the temperature inside the house during the winter months. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, what the answer to that question is. But right now you can see there, open. Good, so it's now in properly. You know, I'll connect them together, closed, open. Good, so it looks like we've got uh, success here. So now we'll take a look at the Fabaro app. Um, you can see here that this is only available in portrait mode, no landscape mode, which is kind of an annoyance of mine, to be honest. Um, I tend to run my iPad only in uh, landscape mode, so sideways, I got a keyboard on the bottom of it. And the fact that this forces me to turn it sideways and doesn't work the way I want to work is it's kind of annoying to be honest. Um, again, that's just a, a, a small issue I have with this. The app is actually quite good. I like how it's organized. I just wish it could be in landscape mode as well. Um, so let's go over and uh, look into the rooms. We'll find that Tristan's room where I put this thing and see what it looks like. So we'll tap on the rooms button. And you can see here, I kind of like the way they've got this organized. So up at the top, you can see um, all downstairs, upstairs, etc. That's actually in the zones. And you can see the Tristan's room actually has a temperature sensor on it which is nice. Um, so now I can go into the Tristan's room, look in the Fabaro, and here's one of the other issues I have. If you look up in the top right hand corner, device tampered. The device tampering sensor went off and I can't get it to to reset. Um, there's nothing in the app that tells me how to do that. There's I, I kind of googled the uh, web page a little bit, looked for it. There's There's no way for me to actually turn that tampering sensor off. So in my case, I'm really not that concerned about it. Um, it's not something that makes a big difference to me. What I bought this for was really for a contact sensor to make sure that a downstairs window is closed. Um, it gets cold here. I want to make sure that I'm not letting cold air in the house, causing freezing, etc. Um, so overall, the Fabaro, the other issue I've had with it is the tape on the back is not that sticky. So I've had it fall off um, multiple times over the course of, of my living with this device over the past few months. Not a big fan of that. Falling off the wall is not what I want this for. Automatically, it falls off the wall. It shows my windows open. That causes me concern. Um, the temperature sensor, I'm still, you know, we haven't hit the winter months yet, but I'm still not convinced that this is going to be a good idea or take accurate measurements in that this temperature sensor is on an outside wall. Uh, I totally understand that I am perhaps not the typical customer and that I live in a northern climate where it gets cold during the winter. Um, so perhaps if you live in a more temperate uh, zone, this might this might actually work out for you. But for me, I think the better way to spend my money, the better way to invest my money, would be to go with the Elgato Eve, which has just the contact sensor and, and nothing more. Um, it's less expensive and it gives me what I need, which is... That's really what we want, right? It's a, it's a good solution that fits the need. Um, the Fabaro is a little more expensive, um, but it does have the extra temperature and the tampering. So if that's important to you, this is probably a great option. Again, I'm just kind of giving you what I've seen over the past few months. Um, as the winter months approaches, we're getting closer. I will update in the comments below and kind of give a better indication as to how this temperature thing works out in a Canadian winter.